Perhaps your vet has mentioned a heart murmur in your cat, or use the words hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which is usually shortened to HCM. It does sound scary, so let's break down what this really means, how it's diagnosed, and what you can do to help your cat live their best life. I'll also explain the staging system that vets use to guide treatment, so you'll know what terms like stage B2 actually mean. HCM in cats is one of the most important, but often really misunderstood conditions in feline medicine. It can be tricky to get your head around, and it's a really surprisingly common problem. Studies suggest that as many as one in seven cats may have some degree of HCM. The good news, only a small number ever develop serious problems. This is a disease that exists on a wide spectrum, from cats who remain completely unaffected for life, to those who sadly develop life-threatening heart disease at a young age. So here's a typical example. Luna comes into the vets for a vaccination and checkup. No concerns at all. Five years old, playful, healthy, the queen of her household. But during her exam, the vet hears something unexpected. A faint heart murmur, barely a whisper, but that tiny sound changes everything. And here's the twist. Most people think either no murmur means no heart problem or that a quiet murmur must mean a mild problem. But sadly, both are myths. Today, we're going to uncover the truth about HCM and why it's one of the hardest conditions to spot. So step one of this is understanding what's actually going on in HCM. So what is HCM? HCM is a thickening of the heart muscle. The name hypertrophic just means thick. And cardiomyopathy literally means heart muscle disease. So this thick muscle becomes stiff and less elastic. It makes it harder for the heart to relax and it struggles to pump the blood efficiently. This muscle thickening takes up space inside the heart's chambers, like a room where the walls have thickened and the space inside has shrunk. We can see this in this animation. The left ventricle is the heart's powerhouse. It's doing all the work, pumping blood right around the body. It gets no rest, and so defects in the muscle add up more here than anywhere else. So now we get a very small heart chamber, unable to fill easily with blood, and this is coming in from the left atrium. Eventually this triggers the left atrium to struggle as well, and this is a turning point in the disease. More on that later. And what causes this thickening? HCM is genetic in origin. The heart's muscle fibers are tiny filaments of actin and myosin, and they're responsible for contracting and relaxing with every heartbeat. Even a small mutation in the proteins that control these fibers can make the heart muscle less efficient. And because the heart works constantly and never rests, these defects show up more here than anywhere else. We believe that there are many different genetic mutations that can all cause the same appearance of heart thickening. So far, only a few have been definitively identified in cats. But meanwhile, in humans with HCM, they've found something like a thousand. I think we've got a long way to go in veterinary cardiology to really catch up with the medical side. Some mutations lead to very mild changes that never cause symptoms but others cause rapid, severe thickening. And who gets it? Certain breeds have a higher risk, including Maine Coons, Ragdolls, and British Shorthairs, but actually HCM can occur in any breed and at any age. Because it's genetic, it can even run in families. So if a parent or sibling has been diagnosed, screening your cat, even if they seem healthy, is really worth discussing with your vet. Also, this is something you should definitely consider before breeding. So let's go back to Luna's story. We have a situation 
where a very quiet murmur is present, but she seems completely fine. What is the best thing to do? Unfortunately, while it's tempting to ignore the murmur, as it is so quiet, this is quite a dangerous approach. Not all heart disease makes noise. In fact, some cats with advanced HCM can have completely silent hearts. The heart muscle thickens, but the blood flow can stay smooth, so there's nothing for a stethoscope to hear. A perfectly quiet chest does not guarantee a healthy heart. Also, related to this, is the myth that the loudness of a murmur is related to the severity of the disease. Unfortunately, a heart murmur just tells us about the sound of turbulence in the heart and nothing about the severity of the disease in this case. In fact, most cats with a heart murmur are affected by an issue that's very indirectly related to the muscle thickening. The heart murmur is usually being caused by an obstructive outflow tract issue. And what is that? Well, let's have a look at the animation again. And you can see how a thickening of the upper septum, which is the bit between the two ventricles, can make it harder for the blood to get out of the left ventricle during each power stroke. We call it a dynamic obstruction because the narrowing gets worse during the squeezing. And when we measure blood flow velocity, we see a characteristic spike in the flow speed as the narrowing gets really bad right at the end of the power stroke. And this is what causes the murmur in most cats. So it actually relates to a very specific region of muscle thickening. And cats with HCM can have muscle thickening all over the heart in all sorts of different areas. It's a very variable thing. Severe thickening at the apex of the heart, which is the very tip, might be completely silent. While very isolated thickening, just at this outflow tract, might make a lot of noise, but could be completely insignificant clinically. So what about signs and symptoms? And does the fact that Luna has no problems mean that there's nothing to worry about? Actually, early HCM is often completely silent clinically, with no outward signs of problems at all. But unfortunately, even severe HCM can also be clinically silent. Also, many cats give no warning at all. They're very good at hiding problems. Some might show subtle clues, such as rapid breathing when resting, or stopping suddenly during play, or even open mouth breathing but others can appear completely normal until a crisis strikes. One of the most frightening complications is actually a blood clot, which can suddenly block the blood flow to the back legs, which is a painful and life-threatening emergency. And yet, we just can't reliably predict which cats are most at risk of this. It's a bit like having a ticking time bomb, and one that can largely be turned off if we use the right medications, but only if we know about it. The other concerning complication is congestive heart failure. But again, many cats are very good at hiding this until a crisis has developed. Because early signs are so hard to spot, regular veterinary checkups are vital. A heart murmur is one of the most useful early clues, but remember, not all cats with HCM will have a murmur and not all murmurs mean HCM. So what about diagnosis? Because this disease is so complex and variable, it can take some serious detective work to get to the bottom of it. Most investigations start with a stethoscope exam and heart auscultation. Detecting a murmur is one common reason for further workup, but also a vet will sometimes hear what's called a gallop rhythm, or even an arrhythmia, all should raise suspicion. Blood tests, such as ProBMP, are a good next step. They're now available in simple kit form, which your vet can run in-house. If they're normal, 
then a severe problem is much less likely. The blood test can detect stress on the heart, and they're very useful for screening purposes, maybe a relative that has HCM, or if you're considering anesthesia on your cat. An echocardiogram or ultrasound of the heart is the gold standard though, and the best test by far. It's one of the only ways to confirm HCM and to assess its severity. As a cardiologist, it's what I do for every feline patient, and without one, I'm pretty much just guessing. It's one of the biggest pieces of the jigsaw puzzle by far, and usually it gets our detective work most of the way towards a resolution. Are x-rays any good? Well, they can show some evidence of heart enlargement for a skilled radiologist, but actually x-rays only show a heart in silhouette. It's like trying to judge the room sizes of a house just from the house's outline. Cat's heart muscle changes are quite subtle, and the muscle is often thickening inwardly, not outwardly, so changes are often invisible on x-ray. And what about Luna? Her pro-BMP blood test showed an abnormal reading. So she was scanned, and the cardiologist did find a thickened heart muscle. And this is diagnostic for HCM. She also had a large left atrium with poor function, and there was smoke present. This is a warning sign for clot formation. And this is what we call stage B2. You may often hear these stages being used in HCM, but what do they mean? So we use a staging system to describe the disease progression. And this is borrowed from the ACVIM staging system, originally used to talk about dogs with mitral valve disease. It helps us understand what treatments to use and how to monitor our patients best. A cat with a thick heart muscle, but with no other changes, for example, a left atrial enlargement, is termed stage B1. At this point, as far as we can tell, nearly all cats remain completely unaffected and often never show any problems. But when the muscle thickening starts interfering with the filling too much, the left atrium starts to enlarge. And this is stage B2, where Luna is. A large left atrium is considered to be a major risk factor in the disease for developing problems. Cardiologists can look for lots of subtle signs on an echo, such as the smoke formation we mentioned before, which is spontaneous contrast appearing in the left atrium, which you can see on echo. The cardiologists add all these risk factors up to determine an overall risk for getting blood clots and of going into heart failure. If they go into heart failure, they enter stage C. This is where the poor filling in the ventricles is causing such poor flow that back pressure starts to build up in the left atrium. The back pressure is then responsible for fluid starting to leak out, both in the lungs and sometimes the spaces around the lungs. However, we can counteract this tendency with diuretics, usually one called frusamide. Diuretics boost the urine output and relieve the congestion and back pressure in the heart and therefore in the lungs. But sadly, finally, stage D can occur, where the back pressure builds up despite a significant level of diuretics being used. This is a difficult stage. Usually higher doses of diuretics are helpful, but it's not always safe and easy to use in cats. Terazamide is a new favorite that's much more potent than frusamide. And what about treatment and management? Currently, there is no cure and no proven medication to prevent the disease from developing. However, as you can see from discussion on the stages, there are some key steps for intervention. Treatment can control symptoms in advanced stages such as stage C and D, and also reduce risks such as blood clots or heart failure. They can be useful from stage B2 onwards, which is while the disease is still silent. Common medications can include beta blockers, which slow the heart rate and reduce the tendency to get obstruction in the outflow tract, anti-clotting medication like clopidogrel, 
rivaroxaban and aspirin all help to prevent clot formation and this can prevent thromboembolus. Diuretics are also essential if heart failure occurs, but also ACE inhibitors like benazapril can be used too, although less commonly nowadays. Monitoring is the key. At home, count your cat's resting breathing rate while they're asleep. It's often called the sleeping respiratory rate, and us cardiologists love it because it's simple, free, and very effective. Take a look at our video here, describing it in more detail. Also, monitoring at the vet is important with regular checkups and repeat echocardiograms. And what about lifestyle adjustments? Unfortunately, no special diet is proven to help at all, although stress reduction is probably beneficial. Maybe omega-3 supplements can be considered, but the evidence is also limited. And what about Luna? Luna was sent home on a new medication to take every day. It's called clopridogrel, and it's an anti-clotting medication, as we mentioned above. It stops the platelets from sticking together in places they shouldn't be doing it. Platelets are tiny cell fragments in the blood and are one of the first steps in forming a clot. So by inhibiting them, we hope to stop clots from forming where they shouldn't do. It was also advised that our owners start counting her sleeping respiratory rate, or SRR, to monitor for any early signs of congestive heart failure starting up. She still has a very good prognosis and may never tip into heart failure. So as long as we manage her risks of blood clot, she will hopefully do really well. And thankfully, many cats that present this way with an incidental murmur might be earlier on in the process than her and they may not need any anti-clotting medication at all. Finally, there's some new medication that is possibly in the pipeline. You may hear things about rapamycin. Have a look at our video on this, and it is certainly a medication to keep an eye on, but we're not recommending it just yet. And what about prognosis? HCM is one of the most variable conditions in veterinary cardiology. Some cats live normal lifespans, and never show problems, but others develop mild to moderate disease, can remain stable for years, and a small number develop severe life-threatening disease, sometimes from a very young age. Early detection offers the best chance to manage risk and keep your cat comfortable. Discuss this in detail with your cardiologist, but remember, without an echo, it's all complete guesswork, as we can't diagnose the disease or stage it at all. So our key takeaways are one, don't panic if your vet hears a murmur. Two, a murmur is a reason to investigate. It's not a diagnosis and it's definitely not a death sentence. Three, an echocardiogram or at least a pro BMP blood test is the next step. And four, regular checkups and early detection are the most powerful tools in protecting your cat's health. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this information useful and please do have a look at some of the other related topics that we cover, such as what is a heart murmur all about, counting the sleeping respiratory rate, how to use the Cardalis app and a deeper dive into congestive heart failure. Also, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel to help other pet owners find the information they need and to help their cats out as well. Thanks for watching.